Hi, this is Dennis Gage. Thanks for tuning in to My Classic Car, home of the Certified Car Nut. Get ready to feast your eyes on some true classics today. We're at the ACD Festival in Auburn, Indiana for the 50th anniversary of the Auburn Cord Duesenberg Club. This is without a doubt the largest gathering of these fabulous cars in the entire world. Joining me now is Al Hatch, the current president of the ACD Club. Al, how you Good doing? Good morning, Dennis, and welcome. Oh, great to be here. Yeah. What an event. What cars. Uh, it, we've been working on this for two years, Dennis, and we set a lofty goal at, uh, two years ago to get uh, 500 cars here. And at first, uh, some of us thought we were all crazy that we couldn't do this. But although we didn't make 500, we got 485. Well, is it because it's the 50th anniversary of the oh, club? Absolutely. Uh, you know, we've been... Uh, uh, marketing this 50th anniversary, heckling club members to get their cars out, and, and they've responded in just an enormous way. Now these are fabulous, fine cars, many of them meticulously and expensively restored, but there's unrestored cars here and cars that have been driven here. Yes, that's a very interesting point. One of the things that we wanted to do is we wanted to encourage all of the club members to bring their cars irrespective of whether it was partially restored or fully restored. And uh, the people who have bought these unrestored cars have really garnered a lot of attention uh, and, it, and it's truly amazing. Big weekend plan too, I mean a lot of events going on, eh? Oh absolutely, this uh, really started with a kickoff luncheon at the museum uh, to receive the people who were coming off the uh, uh, Hoosier tour. We had 54 members on that tour. Uh, obviously the, the judging and, and display of the cars on Saturday and then we had the parade here later this afternoon and then our awards banquet. So for many of us this is a week-long activity and, 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 a, and a, a, a very enjoyable one. Well it's, it's fantastic and seeing all these cars in one place in the park it's just it's almost too much. I've always loved the Speedsters but the Duesenbergs and the Cords Let's get out and look at a few of these. Yeah, we've got a lot of them. All here. right, let's check them out. All right. <laughs> Believe it or not, back in the early 50s, many of the Auburns, Cords, and Duesenbergs that are worth big bucks today were wasting away in used car lots, barns, and junkyards. The formation of the ACD Club at about the same time was the first step toward turning this situation around. No one could have expected the club to grow like it has, nor could they have envisioned such a magnificent festival celebrating these great automobiles 50 years later. Tim, this is beautiful. This is a, a 32 boat tail Auburn. Yes, sir. Gorgeous, but very, I mean, that's pretty rare to begin with, but this is even more rare. They made 67 V12 boat tails over two years, and I think they made 37 in 1932. So wow. that's a rare car. So the, what would the, the numbering be on this? Uh, this is an, uh, officially an Auburn 12160A custom. 12, one, six, 12 standing for the 12 cylinder engine. 12 cylinder, 160 standing for 160 horsepower. Interiors, you know, gorgeous in these. Just a plain rubber mat for the floor, uh, but nice leather and a nice dash, I think. Can we, can we open it up? I mean, sure. I, I'd love to see the 12 cylinder engine. Kind of lay it in that little crack there. Oh man, six of them on this side, six on the other that's side. Right. That's a Lycoming, right? Lycoming engine, because uh, the Auburn company owned Lycoming engines at that time. So it was, uh, Now you recently uh, came back from another show, didn't you, with this car? Uh, two weeks ago I was in Pebble Beach and uh, I was lucky enough to, be, uh, to win uh, first place in class well, at hey, Pebble Beach. I think you can do here. I'm nervous. <laughs> <laughs> well, you so, got an absolutely beautiful card, Tim. Thank you very much, Dennis. Okay. Thanks. Beautiful thank work. You. Stunning. We had a chance to chat with Tammy Laurie, executive director of the ACD Festival. Well, Tammy, uh, pretty impressive. Are you happy? I don't think we could be any happier with the turnout this weekend as far as collector cars, classic cars, and classy people. And everybody just, you know, you're smiling, everybody's smiling. There is a lot to be happy about here. It's really a celebration, and the festival is in the business of celebrating. So we're trying to have a little bit of something for everyone. Now, this is the 50th year of the club, but it's not the 50th of the festival. Festival's 50th is still coming, right? Right. That would be in the year 2006, so we're planning now for that event, and that will also be huge. The museum is such a jewel to have in this town. I would like to say that without the museum here in Auburn, I don't think that our community would be the home of the classics. Judging by this event, it's evident that America's love affair with the Auburn Cord and Duesenberg is here to last. 
Well, Bill, this is a doozy. <laughs> 32 Duesenberg, right? That's correct, 1932. Beautiful, beautiful car. And, and a bit of a family heirloom, right? It is. Uh, my grandfather, uh, Bill Goodwin, from Frankfurt, Indiana, uh, bought this car in the early 1950s. Uh, it was for sale to used car lot in Fort Wayne, or in, pardon me, in Los Angeles. And then a man from Fort Wayne brought it back here to Indiana to its home, and then uh, we bought it from him. Well, you know, I don't tend to think of these things showing up on a used car lot. It's, you know. <laughs> well, in the 1940s, you never knew what you were going to see. Well, I guess that's true. So, so is this the color it was, it was in in the 50s? Yes, this is the color it was in when we got it, uh, in the two-tone green. And, of course, any uh, Duesenberg, you could paint any color you wanted. Uh, yeah. Or have it painted any color. I, I love the two-tone. Now, Thank you. can we open it up? I mean, i got to see the straight eight. You want, it, want me to open it? Oh, please do. Okay. I love these engines. Yeah, look at it. Massive. Straight eight dual overhead cam, 32 valve per engine. We think we're so cool now doing that stuff. They were doing it in 29 and 30. They were. How many horsepower? This is 265 horsepower. Man. Now you got to remember that's three times the average horsepower in the in the early 30s. Unrestored since the at least since the 50s. That's correct. That wow. is correct. Dual cowl, great great interior, and the the wooden trunk. I don't know if I've ever seen that. You know, this is kind of rare to a Duesenberg. We're not sure how many uh, Duesenbergs were made with wooden trunks uh, of the 380 Model J's made. This might be the only one. What a cool car. Well, it, you do drive it. Maybe, maybe you'll have to take me out for a little quick. Hey, Ivy, you want to go for a milkshake? Oh, a milkshake in a Duesenberg? That's Absolutely. Right. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Bill. You're welcome, Dennis. Beautiful. After World War II, Southern California had a lot of ex-servicemen with extra cash and a need for speed. Now, most guys were using roadsters to race both on the dry lake beds and on the street. However, the Pearson brothers, Bob and Dick, along with friend Bobby Meeks, took a coupe, chopped the top, put a 50-degree slant in the windshield, then lowered the body three inches, creating one of the most legendary racers of its time. Well, today we're at the Peterson Museum, and I'm here with Bruce Meyer, the chairman of the board of the Peterson. And Bruce is also not just the chairman of the board, but a, quite a collector of cars and some very, very significant cars, like this extremely cool Pearson Brothers 2D Coupe. This thing has got some serious history, Bruce. What, what's the whole story on this baby? Well, I wish I could tell you the whole story, <laughs> but I can tell you what I know. We need a one-hour special, right? <laughs> That's right. right. <laughs> um, this has always been a favorite coupe of mine, and I believe um, hot rodders everywhere. They call it the most famous coupe in hot rod history. And for me, uh, seeing it on the cover of Hot Rod in 1950 was what you know sparked my interest. And it, it it's a very special car. The shape, the performance, the history. You know, some cars are just winners from the from the get go. And this is one of those cars that's just a well, winner. It's, it's an incredibly slippery looking design. I mean, aerodynamically, yeah. this thing has to be great. But what kind of you know, speeds did it turn in its day? Sure. Well, in, in 1950, it turned 153, which was a record. Every time it turned, it, it seemed it to set. Turn a record. Turn a record. You know, you've got a reputation, got a lot of great cars and stuff, but one of the cool things is that they aren't just museum pieces. Yes, it's in a museum, but you, you actually drive these cars. Oh, you know. You race them. Dennis, you know, it's a car. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know that? You know, I noticed, I noticed, you know, engine, four wheels, two, it looks like a car. It looks like a car, and for me, the fun is driving. I've driven it on the dry lakes, we had it, and we just, you know, it took us almost a year to get the dry lake dust Clean cleaned back out up, yeah. But we also took it, which was really thrilling, across the pond to the Festival of Speed in England. Goodwood, oh, yes. Goodwood, and I'll tell you, the crowds loved it. They had never seen anything like this, and... And you know, they really have a feeling for Americana Oh yes. There. And it was interesting because so many of the, the, the fans from the event, the real admirers came up and they told me stuff that I didn't even know about the car myself. So they are, they, this car is, uh, you know, a real icon on both sides of the pond. Well, and, and Goodwood's not a straight line run either. When you put the helmet on and you sit in this car, all you see out is about 100 feet in front of you. So to try and get the apex right was a real, was a real treat. So I gave them a, a good show. Pleaser, right? Yeah, it was a crowd pleaser, <laughs> and it was really fun for them. So well, it was really Can we great. look inside? I, oh, you know, please I'd do, like to yeah. see the cockpit of this thing. I mean, sure. It's, We're this, talking Spartan. Here. It is austere. If you look in the dictionary, there's a picture of this. That's right, <laughs> this right, right. Min right. Minimalistic. And it's just a wonderful car. It's got the V8 quick change, Halibrand. Uh, it has a you know a late model flathead you know uh, 4950 Merc flathead, 
built by Bobby Meeks, and Bobby Meeks had a way of tweaking engines. Now he was uh, Vic Edelbrock's right hand built all of Vic Edelbrock's engines. They, you so know, this they were, really was built by the best in all respects. Exactly. And this is such a famous coupe, and I, I imagine that there was a lot of documentation, I mean, a lot of photographs and stuff. I mean, did you actually use this, this historic stuff to, to restore it? Oh, Dennis, um, we had uh, the pleasure of meeting Greg Sharp, who is the, and still is the curator of the NHRA Museum. Uh -huh. right. He had some archival shots of this car back in the period. And we sat forensically with magnifying glasses and looking to see every little detail. And we were fortunate that people loved this car so much. They, they didn't molest it? They didn't molest it. And there were lots of pictures of it in the day and as it went through the years. Welcome back to My Classic Car and more of the Pearson Brothers 2D Coupe. If you talk to the Pearson Brothers, they claim the fame of inventing Candy Apple. They, yes, I've they, heard. They, In they, fact, they've said that to me before. Yeah. <laughs> and so um, the paint job on this car, and it says paint by Jones, the paint job in this car looked very similar to this in the day. And they said that they started out and did a very clear, you know, kind of candy apple red paint. Yeah. And, um, you know, this is, this is pretty darn fancy and for a race hand, car even today. Oh, yeah. It's fabulous. Hand-fabricated front end, I'm, I would assume. Yeah, they hand, they hand did that nose, kind of a roadster nose. And now that's kind of a, you know, a look. You yeah. see that oh, yeah. um, in the latest hot rods. So it's... Uh, well, can we, can we open up the, the hood here and see... Uh, we can do whatever well, you want to do. Well, let's do that. Let me see I the power I even plant. give you a ride, except there's only one seat, and I don't know... <laughs> I, I don't want to sit on the battery. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Give you a charge. Yeah, yeah, get a real charge out of that. Sure. <laughs> uh -huh. um, so it's your basic it's, flathead... Uh, exactly. And the carbs were... Just Stromberg 97s. Three of them. Wow, this thing's And got Bobby it. Meeks is still alive and built the engine that's in here now. And, and let me, you know, I, I, <laughs> this car, when we first got it restored, they borrowed it for the um, hot rod tour. So they loaded it on a big 18-wheeler, took it all around the country. Well, nobody ever thought to put antifreeze in it. Oh, no. So when they brought it back to me, like, three months later, it had a <laughs> clack and a block that you could put your hand through. Well, thank God Bobby Meeks was still in the mood, and Vic Edelbrock, said, look at Bobby, we gotta, we gotta have an Edelbrock Bobby Meeks engine in it. So he did a whole nother engine for wow. us. So this is the second engine. But um, it, it's, it's done by the original guy. So, and this is blessed by the Pearson brothers. They signed the dash, you know. <laughs> I saw that, right? <laughs> yeah. So well, this uh, is, and, and you know, maybe the next time we're out, we can take this to Pomona or something and see it actually go down track. I'd love it. And well, I would love timeless. for you to drive this. Oh. It is timeless. <laughs> Excuse me, what did you say? <laughs> We're not being recorded. Oh, no, no, no. Nobody no. heard that. <laughs> I would love for you to drive it. Deal. <laughs> thanks a lot, Bruce. With Fabulous pleasure. Fabulous car. With thanks Dennis, a lot. thanks so much for being here, and thanks for all you do for us. The hobby. You're the best. It's great fun, man. Good.